Hello there, this is Alana Tucky, and I've received a question about this problem, which is 3.2, number 31 from the Math 133 textbook. So if you look in the top right corner, you can see that. So let me click on View an Example. Let's see what we have. We have the weight of an organ in adult males has a bell-shaped distribution with a mean of 310 grams and a standard deviation of 20 grams. Use the empirical rule to determine the following. About 99.7% of the organs will be between what weights? What percentage of organs weigh between 270 and 350? What percentage of organs weigh less than 270 or more than 350? And what percentage of organs weigh between, weighs between 290 and 350? Well, for starters, it's not weight in grams, it's mass in grams, but I digress. All right, so we need to remember the empirical rules. Let me bring that up from the notes real quickly. So right here in section 3.2 is the empirical rule. It says that if a distribution is roughly bell-shaped, then you have approximately 68% of your data to lie within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of the data will lie within two standard deviations of the mean, and then 99.7% of the data will lie within three standard deviations of the mean. And that breaks down to this picture right here, where mu is your mean and sigma is your standard deviation. So if we think about our particular problem, we have a mu of 310 and we have a sigma of 20, right? Those were given to us. Technically, they're both in grams. I should probably add that. And 20 grams. Okay. So now we need to make a picture so that we can use that picture for the rest of it. And let me start with what question A wanted. Actually, before I even get into question A, let me draw a general picture of the whole thing. All right, here we have it, a general picture of everything. So there's the mean of 310 in the middle, and then I have to make my spacing even all the way across. Oops, I don't like that that bar is bigger than the rest. Hold on, let me click in there and fix that. There we go. All right, so if 68% lie within one standard deviation and the graph is symmetrical, that means you have 34% over here on the left, 34% over here on the right, between the first standard deviation to the left and the first standard deviation to the right. And remember, of course, when you're drawing this picture that you need it to look like this. It has to be a normal curve, and you have to section off each section. So this is one standard deviation at 330. Now notice that's 20 away, and that distance right there, so if I had this on a piece of paper and it was two inches, it would have to be two inches for the next section. It has to be equally spaced all the way along because this bottom line is your x-axis. And these are tick marks and scaling that you're giving the x-axis. So you're giving it a scale of 20. So 310 to 330 is 20 apart, then 330 to 350 is 20 apart, 350 to 370 is 20 apart. And those three distances all need to be exactly identical. And then over the same space on the other side, 20 away is 290, another 20 is 270, another 20 is 250. You have to be able to fit three standard deviations to the left and three standard deviations to the right on your curve. Your curve has to follow this shape. The spacing has to be exactly identical. And if you're wondering where to fit it, well, you can see this is one standard deviation. It happens at the inflection point. So that's where the curve changes from being concave down up here. So it's kind of bowl shaped down to concave up over here on the right. So it's kind of bowl shape up. And where it makes the switch is where this line is hitting right here. Another way to see it is if you think of the bottom of the curve as the bottom and the top of the curve as the top, if you think about halfway, it's just a little bit above halfway. And it should be the exact same spot on both sides. So this distance of 10 here should be this distance of 10 over here. They have to be the same. When you're drawing it by hand, you have to make it look exactly like this. Nice, neat curve, equally spaced. And then you have to put in all the percentages that are given to you right in the notes. You don't have to memorize them. They're just those same percentages. Those percentages happen because of the percentages up here being 68, 95, and 99.7. So 68 gets you your 34. If you think of the two white sections and the two light gray sections, those four numbers add up to 95%. So you split everything up equally. So 47 and a half over here on the left, 47 and a half over here on the right.
And then three standard deviations, that's the dark charcoal, the light charcoal, and the white on both sides. That, those six sections would add up to, because you get three over here on the left, three over here on the right, they would add up to 99.7%. That leaves you a 0.3% left over to cut in half, 0.15% over here and 0.15% over here. So you draw that picture with those sections all marked off, perfectly straight lines vertically up and down, each standard deviation is marked, and that width is the same all the way across. Once you have this picture drawn, you have 99% of what you need for the rest of the problems. So for example, for part A, they want 99%, 0.7% will lie within what weights? So let me, let me write that up one second. All right, so because of the empirical rule, we know that 99.7%, here an empirical rule, 99.7% lie within three standard deviations. Oh, let me write that up. Three sigma, three standard deviations of the mean. All right, so what would that be for us? The mean is 310, one standard deviation away is 330, one standard, another standard deviation, two standard deviations is 350, three standard deviations is 370 over here. And by the same token, 250 over on the left. So this would mean that our answer is 250 to 370. There we go. There's the result. All right, now letter B. Let's see what we've got. What percentage of the organs lie between 270 and 350? All right, 270 is right here on the left. 350 is all the way over here. So we need to add up those four sections, 13.5, 34, 34, and 13.5. So let me write that out. There we go. Actually, I wrote up all the rest of them because I figured I might as well. All right, so 270 to 350. That means you start at section 270, so right there at that line, and you move to the right. So you're going to add up 13.5, 34, 34, and 13.5. So let's add them up. 13.5% plus 34% plus 34%, 13.5% so would make a grand total of 95% because that is technically two standard deviations, right? 270 is two standard deviations to the left, 350 is two standard deviations to the right. That makes 95%. All right, now what percentage of organs weigh less than 270? So that's these two numbers over here. So 270 or less is to the left, so 270 to 250 and beyond. And then, or more than 350, so that's this section over here on the right, from 350 over to the right. All right, so we want 0.15% plus 2.35%. That's the left hand side. And then you got to do it to the right hand side. And altogether that would make 5%, right? Because you have 2.5% on the left and 2.5% on the right. Another way to see it is that this is talking about the exact opposite of this one. So this is talking about between 270 and 350. So that's the sections in between. And the next one's talking about being in the left-hand tail less than 270 or the right-hand tail more than 350. Well, the whole curve has to make 100%. So if the middle section's 95%, then the two tails together have to make 5%. All right, and last but not least, what percentage of organs weighs between 290 and 350? All right, so you start at 290 and move your way to the right to 350. So that's 34 and 34 and 13 and a half. So let's see here. If I can, there we go. So I want to start at 34, and then the next section is 34, and then I want to end at 13 and a half. Now what does that add up to? Let's grab a calculator. 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 makes 81.5%. And there we have it. So notice that if you have this graph really well drawn and all things, all the percentages are in, all the numbers are in, your scaling is right and everything, 
then that really helps with all the problems that come after it because all the questions that are coming after it are based on that first graph. And of course, nobody has to memorize these percentages. They all come straight from the notes. They're from this basic example right here from the empirical rule. All right, I hope that helps with that question. I'll see you back here for more tutorials.